All right, good morning, guys. This is Toby here again from wormcastings.net, bringing you um, an episode about neem oil and BT. I'm not going to even try to pronounce BT, but you can look it up online if you'd like. Here it is. It is ORMRI listed to let you know. And you can find these at uh, your local Home Depot, or if you have more time, you can look online. Uh, this is a urban farm update here. Let's bring you over to the giant pumpkin. We did get hit early on with the mold, uh, the mildew. But she's still growing. She's growing well. I'm happy. Got a new Charleston Gray in here, trying a different type of uh, soil. And it's growing slowly. Happy with that. Corn's getting huge. But as you can see, here is what we're dealing with. I mean, they are just wiping us out on the corn. I've never grown corn before and this is what I'm finding. I mean look at this. Some corn is still good so I'm gonna salvage it hopefully. They leave, look at this one. Look at, they, they chopped the whole entire plant in half. But um, let me know guys. Help me solve this problem. We want to have a nice barbecue at least for in a, a few years, pull a few years of corn out of here hopefully, but we'll see. Um, now this one also, this corn didn't get all all the the compost and all that that I usually put in things, um, but I did um, amend with some nice kelp meal and different uh, organic um, general purpose fertilizer. Here's our eggplants. They're flowering. Let me get up under the flowers here so you can see. I just love these flowers. They're really nice. So, um, next stick plant. We have four different types. This eggplant had a little bit of issue with the leaves, but it's actually looking better now. I tossed a whole bunch of castings and, you know, kelp meal and all that. So we'll see if we can bring that one back to life. Over here, our tom tomatillo plant is taking off. It's getting huge and spreading out. Sarah's Choice cantaloupe and um, acorn squash with little squash growing inside. See if you can see that. Flowers. That's why I got the BT because I, I don't want them to, um, these worms to take off as they're doing in other places. Like this zucchini that got huge. Look at that. Nice, huh? I believe we have some little okras on there. I'm gonna change this guy out. Put in some sweet peppers, or not sweet peppers, uh, sweet potato slips. You can um, see a couple of them over there. Now let me zoom in on that. See those two right there and there. So hopefully those will grow out, and if they don't, I put a few in there, and I got some more to plant out today. I stepped on my <laughs> stepped on my brand new crooked neck squash plant. Um, <laughs> hopefully, um, I, you know, I toss some worm castings on it. We'll see what happens, but. Um, now yeah, what are you what are you what are you gonna do, you know? Things happen. This collard is doing great. Doing really nice. I'm happy with it. 
Um, this cantaloupe is not doing nice. The other day it was doing nice, and now not so nice. Who knows, maybe I'll trim it. I'm definitely hitting it with some, uh, some neem and some of that BT today. This Hawaiian current tomato is um, actually uh, heirloom. It's out of Hawaii. It grows very prolific. I mean, it, if you single stem it, it'll grow a, mi a mile just about. So this time I left it in a, you know, I got three plants growing here in a bush style. So um, won't have to be chasing after it all around the garden this time. So it'll be cool. Um, this tomato here will probably grow a good 10 foot tall over the cage that's what I'm thinking but we'll see looks to be doing great so far I think it is a chocolate stripes which is our favorite so over here we love that one this guy on the other hand I've already cleaned the aphids off this multiple times um, so you can see them, there's gazillions of them on there, if that's even a number. But they're not going to be there for long. I gave, I tossed some bat guano down there. It seems as if I'm getting misshapen fruit or something. I don't recall having a variety, a paste tomato like this. It's almost as if this is a different, I don't know, maybe it's not the pear tomato. I'm really at a loss for words here. My buddy was like, hey, your tomatoes are shaped like eggs. So then I noticed a little bit of purpling up here. So I tossed some bat guano on the bottom. So, you know, in the, in the soil and watered it in. Hopefully, you know, tell me what I can do to save this thing. It looks like the modeling has gone away and some of the purple. Um, any tomato experts out there? I don't know, just let me know. I strung up the peppers here. So you guys can see, this is one way to string things up. I just pounded some posts in the end with a sledgehammer. I mean, there's many ways to string things up. Let me get over there so you can see. But I'm trying, always trying to be cost effective, you know. We shouldn't have to spend a million dollars to organic garden, but <laughs> you know how things go. So, anyways, I'm I'm pretty happy with these peppers how they're turning out. These are all green peppers. Oh, look at that! There's a green pepper right there. The shallots, shallots are popping up. The beans. Uh-oh, here we go again. Here we go again with the pottery mildew. I'm busting out the neem oil soon, very soon. And we've been about, so we're seven days about from the last time I think we did the liquid copper, so. Um, we'll see. Here's the rest of those uh, sweet potatoes. You can plant these in, um, uh, you know, these slips. You, you just, I was watching um, the Rob Bob channel, which is pretty cool. Um, and he was he does these sweet potatoes, and I noticed he was doing it in a half an IBC tote, and I kind of used his technique because it is a popular technique to bury the whole thing as you would with a tomato or something else. And one lady I saw, I saw buried the leaves and everything. Um, I just took my leaves and, and pulled the ones that are underground. I pull the leaves off because uh, some folks say that it. Well, you know, it'll rot under there, and you know, when you're making compost and rotting uh, green materials, it takes, it pulls nitrogen, it's said to pull nitrogen out of the soil. So, we get hit heavily here with bugs as well, but guess what? This is rabbit feed. Matter of fact, my rabbits are going to be really happy today because they're getting some, a lot of greens here. I'm also thinning these. So 
So let's see what else can I update you on. So I think that's about it. What did we miss? Oh, there's there's a kale. I've already harvested this kale multiple times. It's doing really well down there. It's pretty happy over there. Let me know um, about about okra as well. It seems like we have some okras developing on these plants. I'm not knowledgeable. Oh, yeah, look at that. Not knowledgeable about okras, but I have been studying lately. If you know anything, like how how tall do these get, and you know, do they look right to you? Um, you know, I don't know. These guys told me, oh, why don't you plant some okra? So I did. We had two plants out of the bunch that didn't make it. So I'll probably toss something in there. We'll see. Um, oh, the watermelon patch. Here's the one cantaloupe that's still, actually there's about six of them there, that's still doing really good. Okay, and I'm crossing my fingers on this one. And actually that Sarah's Choice is doing well. I've been working on these, looks like the yellowing has all gone away there. And the other one's no yellowing. I left these watermelons in the, directly in the grass. And look at this interesting thing. They just grow right up towards the sun. I mean, this thing is like standing straight up like a, like a better than the corn for crying out loud. So I'm pretty happy with that. This is a sugar baby growing up the side of, you know, the trellising up the fence here. Um, let's see, what else? There's another sugar baby looking good. What's this here? I inoculated last night with a bunch of castings. I just, well, say inoculated, I just put a bunch of castings on on there. I just grabbed a bucket out of, you know, out of our worm farm. And um, we did have some yellowing in, in, the, in the middle of the plants. And of course, worm castings are supposed to be some one of the best things for um, for curing you know plant disease mildews um, you know just making health healthy plants so we'll see how that goes also uh, I've been applying kelp meal so as to try to uh, you know get this yellowing back this occurred on this was the worst one that was hit that one got a little bit there and then this one over here. But the rest of the field looks pretty good. Oop. There we go, just stepped on the freaking watermelon. That's all right. Soon here I won't be able to come into the watermelon patch without stepping on something, so I should probably not be in here. Now these watermelon are growing in the grass, and that's how we're gonna keep them. As you can see, watermelon, it grows up the, um, the grass and it will just kind of ride on top. I've seen this many times, some people swear by it. I'm thinking this is going to be our first successful watermelon year. I mean, we have so many varieties, they're growing everywhere. As long as we can keep them alive through the season and keep the worms off them, I'm thinking we're going to have watermelons. If you have any suggestions, give us some uh, comments in the box below. You know, anything we can do to make things better, uh, or anything you like. Like for instance, I mean, how, yeah, once again, how do I fix this? Alright, so, I'm going to prepare my sprays now, and here's that spray again. BT and neem oil. You might order your neem oil on eBay or uh, you know Amazon, something like that. Search around, and get a good deal for it. This BT, I just picked it up real quick at um, Home Depot because I, I needed something right away. So 
And then since I already wanted neem oil, they had this, so I just picked it up. Also a note about this neem oil, I do believe it has um, a wetting agent in it. Many times people, they take neem oil and they mix it with other, you know, with uh, soaps and this causes it to stick to the leaves, right? Otherwise it's like hydrophobic or something like that. And, you know, water and, and oil, you want to make them stick together, so. Um, you know, that's just one note. This, I think, has a wetting agent in it because it, it, I, upon reading the directions, I found out that, um, well, they're, they're basically like, don't put in, you know, mix anything with it. So that's one note about this Home Depot neem oil. So I don't know, There's it's not pure neem oil. It has 30% other ingredients, so. It is OMRI listed, so that's, I think, a good thing. Right there. All right, guys, this is Toby again, and I think we've went far enough. One last thing I want to mention is they finally have this stuff at Home Depot, and they're, they're getting a lot more organic lately, and I'm liking that because now you can finally actually get something there that's not miracle Grow, uh, And this is basically just bone meal and, you know, you know, garden tone. I like this stuff. I think it's, you know, it's an inexpensive alternative sometimes when you're in a bind and you don't have any compost built up and things like that to put teas and all that. So, all right, guys. Once again, I'll, uh, happy spring, and let me let me know. Give me a link to your uh, videos below, and let me let me know what you what you're growing. Send, you know, send me some pictures. I want to see your stuff. All right, happy spring, 2014. Talk to you later. Bye.